So hello, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, and it is with great joy that I announce that we are beginning our public masses this weekend on Saturday, the 13th of June at 4 p.m. Uh, here at St. Joseph's. So we are so excited to have you return, uh, looking forward to this moment for so long, and it is appropriate that you are returning back to the church for public masses to receive our Lord's body and blood on the feast of Corpus Christi. And so I just wanted to take a few moments though to kind of go over what to expect when you return to uh, worship here at the church and what that will look like under these new protocols, these safety protocols that we have uh, implemented uh, so that we can minimize the risk of transmitting the COVID-19 virus. First thing to remember though is that there is nothing uh, uh, like a guarantee that no one will get sick. I mean, it's it, there's a chance if you leave your home that you can get the virus, but we have done everything we know to do with the diocesan guidelines, the, the guidelines from our local health officials, uh, from the CDC, the state, the federal, uh, implementing all the protocols in order to minimize the possibility of spreading this virus. So um, I think a, another principle to keep in mind is that we are doing the best we can uh, to uh, serve as many people as possible under the limit that has been presently imposed and that is a hundred person limit uh, at, in each of our buildings and so we are using both our hall and our beautiful church to uh, have masses to accommodate as many as possible we still have our outdoor mass so i'm encouraging people to to come to that especially on saturday night 7:30. Uh, we'll have the mass here outdoors. Uh, you can come out of your car, stand near your cars. You want to bring chairs, you can bring chairs to sit, of course, with social distancing always in mind, uh, but to participate uh, in that mass and to see that as kind of our first real big mass together uh, as a parish celebrating uh, the return to uh, receiving the Holy Eucharist. Now, uh, the other principle to keep in mind is that those of you who are maybe in the category of uh, a higher risk, maybe you're older, pre-existing conditions, um, you are serving or caring for somebody that also has pre-existing conditions and could be, their health could be seriously jeopardized if they did get the virus, you are encouraged to stay home and to continue to uh, participate in the mass uh, as best you can through our live stream. We are still going to live stream our 10:30 a.m. mass, our uh, Spanish mass. This week it'll be at 3:30, uh, and our Latin mass, which will be at 1 o'clock. It's a little different schedule in the live stream, but we encourage you to do that. For those who uh, are wanting to come back, we in, we want to make sure though that you uh, take a moment to. Do a self-check each time you come to the campus. Like if you are not feeling well, uh, if you have a cough that you can't attribute to anything else, if you have a temperature over, um, I think, 100 degrees, I mean, that would be the, probably the maximum, or 99.5 is what I think has been said. If you have a temperature, um, if you have a fever, uh, like I said, or a nausea, that you would not um, want to uh, come to the campus. We would encourage you to stay home uh, or come to the church and stay home to um, recover and uh, again participate in our live stream mass. All right, so the first thing you're going to notice is that we are going to be keeping our doors open so you do not have to touch the doors uh, to minimize uh, any possible spread there. And the very first thing we're going to ask you to do is to go to and at each door, each entrance, you will notice that there is a sanitizing station. So you will need to sanitize your hands, or we ask you to please, please, uh, as you enter the church. Uh, and uh, then once you've sanitized your hands, we will have an usher here. So we're doing um, our usher training and they'll be trained to be able to then find a seat for you or a pew for you and your family. So um, as you can see in the church, we have now marked off our pews. So if you'll notice, we have every other pew that is uh, blocked, but then at the pew that you would be sitting, there will be an X where you and your family would, would sit during the actual liturgy or the mass. Well, the first thing you'll notice is that we will not have singing. And that I know is very sad and we should try of course always to sing and um, praise God with our voices. Uh, but um, according to the health officials, 
this is a way to um, possibly transmit uh, the COVID virus. So we are adhering to what the county has requested and even our diocese, the diocese is very clear on this, that we will have no singing. Now we will use instruments uh, to uh, at least have a little bit of music, but we are not gonna be singing. The next thing that you will uh, notice is that we will um, uh, not be, uh, of course, holding hands. Uh, we shouldn't really do that anytime during the liturgy itself. Um, I know some have the custom of holding the hands during the Our Father, but we would ask not to do that. And uh, there's actually, that's not really part of the liturgy, but I know it's a custom that people have kind of got used to, especially with their families. But, but we're asking no holding hands and then we will not uh, also have what's called the sign of peace. So the priest, you will uh, not hear, let us offer each other's sign of peace, or if you do, there will be uh, the strict caveat that we can only bow to one another to acknowledge one another and not to extend our hands or to touch uh, one another for the sign of peace. For Holy Communion, uh, we will uh, ask you to remain in your pews until you are uh, asked uh, to come forward by the ushers. So when you come out of the pew, uh, what you will do is you will be directed towards uh, the sanctuary and we are going to be using now our altar rails. And the reason, uh, one of the reasons we like to do this is because there will be a natural distance between the priest uh, and the one receiving communion. So there are markings on the floor to indicate where you would um, start at the rail and you do have the option if you'd like to either stand remain standing or you can since we do have the kneelers here you may kneel now you also have the uh, um, option of receiving either on the tongue our lord jesus or in the hand so if you're receiving on the tongue of course you want to lift your head up and tongue out past your lower lip uh, and then our then the, the priest will go ahead and place our Lord on your tongue. If you want to receive in the hand, you have that option, but we ask that you maintain a flat hand. If your fingers are curved like this, it is much more likely we will touch your hand as we place our Lord Jesus. And of course, touching is the possible mode of transmission. So we want to avoid touching at all. Uh, and I'll explain what will happen if we do touch a communicant, but please maintain your hand flat. We will put our Lord Jesus on your hand and you will then take your bottom hand to reach, to receive our Lord and place him now in your mouth right away. Please do not move away with him. So you're not in motion with Jesus on your hand. And we do ask you, and I forgot to mention, is when you come up to please have your mask already down. And we'll talk a little more about the mask at the end but please have your mask down. So again, you will just wait for your, the turn, for your pew's turn to come forward. If you are not ready to receive for whatever reason, of course you don't have to come up forward. You can just kind of step out of the pew and allow others to come forward, or you can come forward placing your hands over your chest uh, as we normally do to receive a special blessing. Well, uh, we have been instructed to have a table. I don't have a table set up yet here, but you will, uh, during the Mass, there will be a small table brought out at the time of Holy Communion that will have um, some items on them that we will need in the event that we touch uh, somebody's hand or tongue. So what the first thing we'll be using is a, a little bowl of water, an ablution bowl. And what that is for is when we are giving communion, we may assume that there could be little particles of our Lord Jesus on our fingers. And so we, uh, before sanitizing, uh, we want to purify our fingers from our Lord Jesus. And so we will have a little bowl with a cruet of water, which we will pour over our finger. And then I will use the sanitizer uh, or the disinfectant. And then I'll take the ciborium and then go to the next person. Now, this is only in the event that I touch um, somebody's um, hand or tongue. Typically, we do not. 
especially on the tongue. It is very easy to do without touching the person's tongue. Uh, hand, sometimes I've noticed, is a little harder now because people are bending their hands. Uh, but, but again, if we keep them flat, we should be okay. And so that's how, uh, during communion, you also notice us wearing masks. Uh, the priests will wear masks so that we, because of the, uh, the close proximity to the recipient, um, that we either, you know, if there's a cough or something, or if they cough on us, uh, that, that we can minimize any possible transmission. We are recommending very, very highly to wear masks. Now, I know that this, for many of you, is a sore point, and I agree, they're very uncomfortable, and I have been wearing them. You can see I've been working on trying to get a little more comfortable with them. Of course, they fog up my glasses when I put on the, I put on the mask. But it is uh, something that uh, we definitely want to consider out of Christian charity because uh, I know um, not only for our health officials locally, you know, they've been strongly recommending and our diocese strongly recommending the mask. But uh, if you notice in some of those countries that have really used the mask, uh, I'm thinking of Japan is one, South Korea is another, um, they have very low cases. Uh, or numbers of new cases of the COVID-19 and their transmission rate and um, spread is much lower than in places that are not using the mask. So I think for now we really want to get used to using the mask. Uh, so I'm a proponent even though I'm resistant. So please, um, and, and if you don't have one, we can see if we can get you one. I think we're, gonna, we're not going to be able to maybe give everybody a mask, but we're going to try uh, to make sure that everybody who wants one can um, and I'm sure a lot of you already have. When you enter, you will not have the holy water font, right? We have taken the holy water fonts away because that may be uh, a, a way to transmit. Uh, and so um, you still can bless yourself though without the holy water. And the holy water is nice to have because it does, of course, a sacramental, reminds us of the baptism, we're using water. Um, if you, um, you know, before you leave your home, maybe you should have your holy water there. Uh, we can have holy water blessed here water blessed you can take home you can have a fun at home and use that for your family and so I do encourage that and even to bless your own home I do appreciate all of your patience I do appreciate greatly your prayers and your support I know that you've been been so uh, faithful uh, to the parish uh, with your contributions uh, with your remaining uh, devoted to your faith through this time uh, praying at home in your domestic churches uh, take being with us on our live stream so thank you very much uh, I know that we've worked very hard on on trying to, to reach you through those means but certainly the live stream mass is not the mass in person and that's what we're so anxious and so grateful to be able to do and looking forward to having you here and maybe the biggest principle to, to walk away with in all of this is just a uh, humility you know I have to be humble as your pastor uh, because this is a big change for me too and there's some things and the priests have to kind of change the way we we um, you know walk around the altar and while we integrate or, or uh, interact with our parishioners I won't be able to, to, to hug you or to, to shake your hand uh, and that's very sad right now but of course we know why and we would ask of course you do the same for other parishioners so to give them their space and not to encroach on that 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 uh, that social distancing so my brothers and sisters thank you so much for your time and listening to all of our new protocols here at st joseph's as we prepare for your return to uh, mass and receiving our lord jesus christ but i also again want to remind you of our outdoor masses and i'm encouraging you to consider to come because we don't have really a limit on the number of people that we can have at any one time uh, as we do for the indoor masses now we are social distancing and spreading out of course the cars as best we can. There's much more area outside here in our parking lot. And we have this special uh, altar or sanctuary and altar that we have set up for specifically our outdoor masses. Again, 7.30 on Saturday night. I really encourage you to come. That's gonna be the Corpus Christi procession right after. And just a beautiful celebration as a parish, the gift of our Lord Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and uh, the light that we need that he is to remind us that he's that light we need to continue to walk through this darkness that we're in but that he's got us this far and that he will continue to, to give us the grace we need especially now that we can receive him in us and have that light in us to bring that bring his light to others so uh, thank you again and may the lord continue to bless you and your beautiful families